Well, today I continue my nostalgic look back, my retro week, my uh, tip of a cap to a earlier time. And today I'm going to unbox or re-unbox Midway. Yes, this is the classic Avalon Hill Midway game. Um, now, this one is the Smithsonian Institution uh, edition. Uh, I think uh, Avalon Hill came out with uh, these kind of specialized versions. Uh, nowadays, I think you might call them deluxe versions uh, of, of their some of their classic games. And uh, this one I picked up, oh, when did I pick this up? I think I picked this up um, in the 2000s. So not, not nowhere near, I guess, when it originally came out. I probably picked this up somewhere along the lines of um, 2005 to 2015. I'll give you a decade. <laughs> I can't really recall when I picked this one up, but uh, I played the uh, some version of it. I think Midway's had more than one version. I played one version early on, you know, probably in the 80s and 90s. But uh, I wanted to pick this one up because I didn't I didn't own Midway, uh, and this one has not been um, uh, unboxed or at least has not been played. Let's put it that way. So it hasn't been punched. I've looked in here a few times. Uh, and I think I got it un, uh, un, uh, without shrink wrap. Uh, and there's, you can see there's a little bit of dishing in here. Actually, when I got it, it had some of that dishing already, so it might have been sitting on someone's shelf. But uh, I did open it up, and I think I did an inventory, and everything looked like it was in there, so I felt pretty good about that. Uh, now, you know, this is a uh, definitely not a game that is easily to solo because there is quite a bit of hidden information and as you get into naval combat especially this pacific uh, pacific war uh theater of, of world war ii then uh there's a lot of hidden information in fact that's a lot of the games focus on that kind of search aspect of where they add and you know, and trying to be you know have your unit units prepared or your air up and prepare prepared for uh, defense um, at the same time trying to seek out you know the uh, opposing carriers and to take them out so uh, and that's probably one reason why I never uh, really uh, broke this one out because um, I didn't have uh, when I first got it I think my son was too young and then later on uh, just got too busy and we just never got into uh, wanting to play this uh, this is not an overly complex game but you know based on some of the you know having that, that whole concept of, of naval combat in the Pacific of search and find and seek and destroy type aspect it does become a little bit uh, it's not it's not as easy to get to the table in that regard here's the back of the box this is about the American History Series. That was like a, something that was done in conjunction with the, the uh, Smithsonian Institute. Um, it says right here, complexity is low, uh, solitaire suitability is low. I, uh, the solitaire suitability, I agree with that 100%. Complexity, yeah, I'd say this. it's not overly complex, especially when you look at some of the games that uh, have come out since dealing with uh, the Pacific Theater uh, at, which I, and some of that I really enjoy. Like Empire of the Sun might be my, my favorite game on this topic. Uh, very different compared to uh, this and much more complexity there uh, and also a, a different look at it. This is a little bit more of a traditional look at that theater. Um, looking here, you say, Change History in Midway. Victory Fever, the Imperial Japanese High Command would later term their state of mind in the spring of 42. There was no end to their cheap, one-sided victories over the soft Western democracies. Now was the time to mass the Japanese feet for, fleet for the decisive battle to destroy the, the portion of the United States Navy that had escaped the debacle at Pearl Harbor. An attack on Midway, a strategic speck of coral and sand within flying range in Hawaii, would surely lure the outnumbered U.S. Pacific the, fleet to its doom. What they didn't know was the American uh, cryptologists were reading their coded messages and knew their plans in some detail. 
when the time came, the heavily outnumbered United States Navy, backed by Marine and Army Air Force aircraft based on Midway, massed at all available forces to attempt a classic ambush on the overconfident Japanese fleet. The events that follow will determine the course of the war in the Pacific, but this time there is a difference. This time you are in command. Um, one of the things that, that uh, uh, I, uh, one of the things about Midway, I mean, Midway is a very interesting battle. It's kind of, you know, kind of the change of the tide, you know, so to speak, of the war uh, in the Pacific, at least. And uh, there's been some really good movies on it. There is the classic Midway with a cast of a thousand, you know, you're, uh, a whole bunch of, you know, veteran actors involved in that. Uh, and then there's the new one, with which, of course, has some, you know, great CGI effects. Uh Love to know your thoughts. Which one do you go with on that one? Um, I like the new one. I enjoyed the new one. Uh, it, it felt to me like it was it was more than just the Battle of Midway, and it also felt that it was trying to go into something a little bit uh, reminiscent of the Pearl Harbor movie, which uh, let's not get into that one. Uh, but it, it was trying to be more expansive than just the specific battle at hand. Um, and uh, so, I mean, so that's kind of interesting. The, the additional context and, and the, the graphics and, 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 and the like were very good. But, you know, it's hard, it's hard to knock the old one. Uh, it had flaws in it as well. But, I mean, I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts on which one you want to go to. You might call this one as a Kilroy Goes to the Movies. Uh, put, that on, uh, put that on that playlist as well. Anyway, so let's get inside this box and see what we have here. As I said, this is in the original format in which I got it. So if it was packed differently, I think I repacked it basically the way that I, what way that I found it. Uh, this is one of those flat boxes that uh, Avalon Hill would do from time to time. I think they did a special for the, the Smithsonian issue, so it was a little bit thicker than some of their other flat boxes. And you can see there's some dishing here, but that was the way I got it. I mean, again, this this game, uh, geez, I need to figure out what, how old this is or when this was, uh, what the copyright is. But it's been around for a while, so you should expect some dishing. Yeah, Ten-sided dies. That was uh, that was something a little bit different for Avalon Hill. And here's the, the battle manual. As you can see, really, it's a small battle manual, but it's a thick, thick book. So that's why I kind of say, well, the complexity on this is not... Uh, I don't know, I would say it was low. Um, you know, uh, low for war games, but overall complexity, given that Avalon Hill produced games a little bit more for the mass market, um, I would not put this as low. But then again, that might just be me. Here's your unit information reference here. You've got your ship and base unit information. All the stuff that's on the uh, counter there. You have your air unit information, all the stuff that's on the counter there, as you can see. Uh, and let's see, how many pages are we talking about here? We're talking about 47 pages, but again, it's a small booklet. And there's some advertisements and some other things going on in, in here. Uh, you've got a little bibliography here. So it looks like you're talking 43 pages uh, of, of rules. And this last section is talking about umpire games. That uh, I highly recommend if you can get it, if you can find a, a third wheel, so to speak, that will referee the game. Uh, these games, especially, you know, games like the Pacific Theater games where there's a heavy search component and unknown information, uh, umpiring is, the, is, is awesome if you can find it. I know that, that that's done at conventions uh, and the like, but um, that really adds a lot to this game because uh, you're, not, uh, you're not just writing stuff down and trying to figure, you know, and, and trying to work together with the other side to make sure that you're keeping stuff concealed. You're just having a third party say, yep, something there. Nope, nothing there. Or what did you see? I mean, it's kind of cool to have it umpired. Uh, and that basically an umpire is like a referee that looks at the orders of both sides, knows where everybody's at and looks at the orders of both sides and uh, kind of relates information as it is revealed. So that's pretty cool. Here is the table of contents. Here's your reference information. This is how you set up uh, the, around the table. And as you can see, the, there's there's color, but it's mainly highlighting color uh, in throughout this book here. And it's relatively small print. So you're talking 43 pages of rules uh, of small print. So again, I, I kind of question the low complexity on this. Now the original game might've been that way, but they really added a lot more uh, discussion in this one. 
why was there a battle of midway so this is i think part of that historical uh series or the smithsonian series they're, they're getting a little giving you a little bit more context on what's going on here uh so you're going to have a little bit, you're going to have these little insets, I think, talking about history throughout. So that's probably another reason why you have the rules going as far as they do, because you've got uh, little historical anecdotes or snippets of history throughout here. Um, and kind of get, you kind of get lost in the rules with them, too. I think they're a little bit, I think they're itali italicized or in italics. But uh, then get lost in the rules here. So this is all background. So there's a lot of history in here. Now we're getting into some cool stuff here. I like I like looking at these uh, top down views. This is just information on the on the ship. So right in the middle of the rules, you've got um, um, <laughs> you've got in the U.S. is in blue and the Japanese is in red. You've got historical information throughout. So. Uh, I hadn't looked at this in a while, so I forgot that this was a lot of history um, sprinkled throughout the rules. Now we're getting back to some rules here. And then you get the optional rules. So may may maybe the rules really aren't that much when you look at it. So maybe I'm wrong on the complexity, but uh, maybe it was just the fact that I, as I was going through the book, I just saw so much stuff throughout that. Anyway, again, I played the... I can't remember which version I played. There's at least two versions of this, if not three. Um, and I played one back in the day. But that was over 30 years ago, probably, when I played that. Definitely with the optional rules, I think it's a little bit more than low complexity. But I'll, I'll reserve that judgment. Here's multiplayer rules, and there you have it. So there's your rule book, or basically a history book, too. You know, nowadays you would have a... a rule book and then you would have maybe the optional or advanced rules and then you'd have a separate history book you know or battle book that might have an example of play in the history in there here's your counter sheets you're not talking about a ton of counter sheets here take a look at those a little closer and they're dual sided there those are the ships and then you get the planes You got some hit markers here, some administrative markers there too. Then we've got uh, these are your shields. I think the to, to kind of the search board screen is what they call it to kind of put up between the two, so you're, you're hiding where your movements are at. This is on thicker stock, thicker than normal play stock here, but it also has a complete sequence of play. And I think yeah, that's on both sides. So no matter what side you're sitting on, you can see your complete sequence of play, your search chart, submarine attack, chasing, causing and marker, marking losses and victory points chart. So you've got some key charts, play charts, as this sits up between the two of you. Here is the United States operations card. So you got your task force and the Midway base. And then what is on the uh, ships, you know, whether they're ready or they're arming. And of course, that will be on the on the table. And you got your Japanese carrier force here. We got their task force, and you got their carriers. Um, and whether something's ready or arming, so that's your your flights or your planes there. Then we have. Uh, well, this is the basic game. Okay, there you go. So maybe that's the. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. All right, so there's your basic game. So at that level, if this is all you're playing with then yeah, maybe this would be low complexity. Low complexity for a war gamer, uh, definitely I don't think that is low complexity for you know your average gamer. But uh, you know, the average gamer has evolved over the years in you know playing Euro games now as opposed to playing, you know, Risk and Monopoly. So uh, we can have a whole discussion about that too. So really so you got this extra long page, uh, two, dual dual color, red and blue. Uh, with some highlighting, but um, game equipment, general game rules, action phase, which is going to have your movement and combat. Then you got your combat here, and then you have uh, returning phase, and then the turn re records phase. 
and but they do reference the ma battle manual that thicker book you know see rule 10 in the battle manual so there is some uh reference back to the battle manual here but i think this probably covers most of the rules so in that regards for a war gamer yeah i'd say low complexity uh it has the the only complexity is just the nuance of of, of the Pacific Theater and, you know, readying planes and stuff like that. But um, anyway, enough of that. But there, there's your basic rules. Then you have some mounted boards here. Uh, this is classic Avalon Hill, you know, fully mounted boards here. And we'll take a look at those as we get those out here. And then you got the battle board here. A little bit of warping going on there because this is old. And then let's see what we... Uh, Nothing inside, nothing underneath there. Oh, no, I stand correct. I feel, I hear something. I hear something. Ugh. That was interesting. They had this little slip here to kind of hold hold some stuff together. Oh, well, we got, a, we got uh, what do we have here? We have a catalog. Oh, there we go. And I got to do a friend of favor thing here. So, oh, I got a catalog I need to cover. I started off my coffee with Kilroy's by covering an Avalon Hill catalog. So maybe I needed, you know, I got. A, I didn't. Maybe I didn't even check to see if that was there. So I got me another catalog to cover. All right. So let's put this back. Let's look at those battle boards. And here's a look at the battle board first. So this is the battle board. So this is where you're going to set up uh, your ships. This is the U.S. side down here. Uh, and then you've got a, a night si setup line. And then you have the setup day setup line. So I guess you have to set up closer here for night scenario if you're in each night and you set up a little bit further away. Um, that's interesting. You've got a surface turn record track. You've got your surface combat ranges here. You've got um, combat die rolls, modifiers. You've got your gun and ship torpedoes, showing kind of what the arcs are or the uh, vectors or sectors. So you got all that there. And then, of course, you're going to have on the other side, you're going to have the uh, Japanese. This is their side of the battle board. They're going to have the same charts. And then you have the different battle boards. So this is the Japanese battle board. So this is where they're going to keep track of their uh, forces uh, uh, behind that screen that I showed you before. Has the time record track here. Uh, and then this is where you're moving your units. And I wonder how you mark stuff. Are there markers in here on these counter sheets? To uh, There's hits that you can mark. Yeah, maybe you mark with these question mark things here. That's how you would mark on that board. To kind of figure out where they're at. Anyway, uh, and then you're going to have the sa a similar or identical, uh, except it's in blue, for the United States. So this is the United States search board. So this is where they're going to have their forces and then um, trying to figure out or locate the, uh, sorry, I got some glare there, the uh, Japanese forces. Very nice little mounted boards here. So um, that's kind of cool. Uh, again, quite a bit of warping of some of these boards there. Um, I'll put these out like this. So there you have the, uh, let's put these down here. because These are the Japanese and put these up here to be part of the U.S. And I'll see what we have there so love to know your thoughts on this one have you guys played uh you all played um the uh this version of midway or any of the previous versions what are your thoughts on it is it uh is it really too basic given you know these rules here or is it you know uh with some of the advanced rules it's still a decent uh simulation uh that doesn't take up you know too much uh time or space to play uh i don't know i'd love to know your thoughts on any of that stuff put this under there uh i i find this interesting uh, uh as a game i kind of want to uh, i want to kind of remember back to when i played it and what did i think about it at that time but um got the dice there too 
Uh, I've got that all framed somewhat nicely there. But there is Midway. Get a little bit closer in there so you get a better shot of the game. And for good measure, and to make sure that it qualifies for a Kilroy Goes to the Movies, here is Midway. This is the new version, or the more recent version of uh, Midway. I mean, it's not, it's not really a remake of the original, but it's a uh, newer telling of the story. But again, this one goes into a lot more uh, uh, detail or context, goes, you know, before Midway, and a little bit after as well uh, as, you know, kind of, again, similar to Pearl Harbor, which really kind of did a pre-Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor, and then uh, then um, uh, Doolittle's Raid. And actually, Doolittle's Raid is in uh, in this, too. So, anyway, uh, qualifies for Killer Goes to the Movie. What do you all think about, hey, talk about the movies, uh, or talk about this game, or talk about the other games that maybe simulate this battle, what you think, uh, it's all fair game. I just thought I'd go down a little bit of uh, nostalgia and take a look at Midway, the Smithsonian Institute Historical Edition. Anyway, thanks all for stopping by. Drop your comments down below and take care. Thanks for watching!